I've had uh, several people over the years to ask me to write down my experience with the UFOs and or document it somehow. And because of the naysayers and the heretic calling and all that, well, I've decided that I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm too old to even worry about it. First of all, I'm a firm believer that there are things in this galaxy that, in the universe, that people have no clue of. The, the Bible tells us it's there in the first place. Having said that, <clears throat> I was coming home from work in the winter of 1990, very early winters, like January if I remember right. It's been a long time ago. The date, but I do remember the events. I was living in Rock Hill, South Carolina by a nuclear power station on uh, Lake Wiley. Beautiful place if you ever been there. Wonderful fishing. We glow in the dark. <laughs> but anyway, I stopped the stop sign and I normally do at the crossroads and I looked right and left. And as I looked right, a big bunch of three lights caught my eye. They were very close to the ground. Well, probably maybe three, four hundred foot in the air. So, at that time, cell phones were not uh, <laughs> prevalent, obviously. Um, so, I was really anxious to tell my wife about it. So, I rushed home as quick as I could. My home was about four miles from that point. All the same time, I kept looking right to the right of me, and those lights never moved. They never changed. They stayed at the same place. Where they were, they were right over the dam, right there at the beginning of the lake. Well, I went home and I told my new wife, we hadn't been married but a few months. I said, uh, I told her what was going on, and I said, you got to get in the car and you got to go see this with me. I'm like, you will never believe it. I mean, it may not be there when I'm going. I never, I wholly expected it not to be there when I got back. Because you're talking about a 20 minute transition from the time I seen it to the time I got home and convinced her I wasn't drunk and crazy and all the above and decided to go back down the road. Well, we got in the car and as we're driving down the road, you have a lot of uh, tall pine trees on the left. So you really couldn't see it till you got down past the second, the next stop sign and he started seeing it. It was still there. I could not believe that it was still there. <clears throat> so we got down to the crossroads where it turns you turn left to go out to the dam. And all the same time we're watching it and wondering what in the world it is. Just bright, bright triangle of right of lights. You couldn't miss it. I mean I don't see how it didn't make the news, but it didn't. But we get out there to the lake. And that lake place where I'm talking about was a typical party spot, even in the wintertime. It didn't get that cold in South Carolina, so there was a lot of people out there. Had been already out there to begin with, and there was couples and drunkards and you name it. was all up on this damn wall, this dirt wall, watching this. And the wind <clears throat> was something fierce. There was no wind anywhere else. It was a still cold southern night, almost frost, which down there it doesn't happen very often, but it was almost frost. It was so still. But when you got up on that dam, that wind was fierce. I mean, it was blowing your hair and everything everywhere. And we stood there watching it. And you could feel the roar off the wind, but you, you couldn't hear it couldn't hear it and I can picture it to this right now at this moment sitting there telling you about it 
This thing was not more than a hundred feet above us, and it was positioned directly over the dam. Not making a sound, only the wind. Only the wind. And you could see a slight outline between the triangle lights. And it was it was like it's hard to describe, but it was like an out of focus saucer, so to speak, but with triangles on it. It wasn't a saucer, it was it was right angles, all right angles, or excuse me, triangle angles, forty five degrees, whatever you want to call it. You can correct my grammar later if you like. But we stood there watching it what it seemed like at least 20 or 30 minutes, but it didn't. When we finally left and got back in the car, we hadn't been there five minutes, but it seemed like forever that we stood there watching it. But here's the strange part about it, besides the whole event itself, the actual feeling. You could actually feel the air off this thing blowing down on you. Is... When we turned around, we I remember I said when we got there, there was probably 10 or 15 cars there, and all these other people were there. When we turned around to leave, there was another couple standing beside us, and that was it. All the cars were still there, and there's no people there. Well, we just assumed at the time, we were just young, we just assumed at the time, well, they've went and got back in their cars because they was cold because we were freezing or they went and partied or whatever like i said that was a party spot and we was like well they went back to their partying or whatever but they were gone all but us and that other couple was all that was there well as i left you could still see them lights shining up over that dam we got out to the stop sign and we started heading back home and then you looked across the field where I'd originally seen it which is about a mile and a half from where the dam is and those lights started going out and by the time we got a mile up the road them lights were gone it was gone I stopped and turned around in a parking lot and went back to make sure and sure enough them lights were gone it was gone we never went back up to the dam I don't mean that I went, turned around, went back to where I could go look across that field real good, and them lights were gone. The lights was gone. Now, some would say, well, it might have been an airplane. No. Ain't no airplane sits that still. The wind was a-blowing on I me, mean, it was something fierce coming off that thing. Trees was moving. I mean, the branches was moving. The water was moving. Well, it might have been a helicopter. I, well, never seen a helicopter like that in my life if it was, and if it was... The light span on that thing was at least, at least 200 feet in between each light. Picture a triangle, 200 feet between each light. Now that's been a monstrous triangle, or a helicopter. I ain't got no idea what it was. I don't believe it was of this world. I can't explain to you where the time went. I can't explain to you why it felt like we were there 30 minutes. Where Meanwhile, when we checked our clocks when we left, we'd only been there five. I can't explain to you where all them other people went that fast, and that yet their vehicles were still there. Can't explain none of that to you. But all I can tell you is, is I am a believer that in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a believer in God Almighty, and I do believe that, they, that the Bible tells us there are other things that are not of this world and I believe that's what one of them was and I believe that that's what I see you guys can say what you want think what you want call me crazy call me an old coot call me an old southern dipstick preacher it don't matter what you do but here's my story and uh, anyway wanted to hear it there it is and if you have any questions about it feel free to contact me I'll tell you what I can and uh, I'm out of here. God bless you with one and all.